Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, signal processing, control theory, machine learning, optimization, etc. In this video tutorial we explain how to compute Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms in Python by using the SymPy or SymPy library. In this video tutorial I will call this library as SymPy. But before I start with the explanations, I would like to briefly mention the main motivation for creating this video tutorial. Namely, MATLAB is arguably the most popular tool for simulating dynamical systems, for evaluating their stability, for computing inverse Laplace transform, etc. However, MATLAB has one drawback. It's not free. And this is very important if you cannot afford the MATLAB license or if you're an owner of a small company and you don't have money to buy licenses. And consequently, if you cannot afford the MATLAB license, you need to search for alternatives. One very good alternative to MATLAB and its symbolic toolbox, but not only its symbolic toolbox, is the SymPy library. I discovered that the SymPy library can be a very useful tool for simulating and analyzing dynamical systems. In fact, you can do a lot of things with this library. Consequently, I want to show you how to start with this library and I want to explain in this video how to compute the Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms by using this library. Why are the Laplace and inverse Laplace transforms important? Well, there are many reasons. Maybe the two most important reasons are the following ones. First of all, these transforms are used to solve differential equations. Secondly, these transforms are very, very, very important for simulation and analysis of dynamical systems. For example, we can compute a step or an impulse response of a system by using an inverse Laplace transform under the condition that we know the transform function of the system. Okay, but before I finally start with the explanation, I would also like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial as well as other free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. First, we will learn how to compute the Laplace transform of time domain functions. For example, let us imagine that we want to compute the Laplace transform of this function. Where t is time and b is a constant. Obviously, the Laplace transform of this time domain function is given by this equation. Where s is the complex variable. This function over here is arguably one of the most widely used functions in control systems. So let's learn how to compute this Laplace transform by using SymPy. Over here I've wrote a code, however, I will open a new window and I will explain this code step by step. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. We are importing the SymPy library and from SymPy we are calling this function init printing. This function will enable us to nicely print these type of expressions in our command or console window. Also know that I'm using the spider editor. I like this editor a lot since it reminds me of MATLAB. Namely, you can simply select a piece of code, you do the right click, and you can evaluate this code in the window. Over here, you can type who's, similarly to MATLAB, to see all the variables in your memory space. To define this function in SymPy, we first need to define the variables and constants. Over here, the variables are time, and the complex variable s, and the constant is b. 
we can use this code line to define the variable time. We use sympy.symbols, we specify the name of the variable, in our case this is time, t, and we specify that this variable is true. In a similar manner, we define the complex variable s, and by, by default this variable will be complex. You don't need to specify that this variable is complex. Next, we define a constant. We do that by using this code line. We simply say sympy.symbols b, b is the name of the variable, and we over here specify this is a real variable and it's positive. In fact, this will define the constant. Let us define this function in sympy. To do that, we will type this line. f1 is equal to sympy.exp and over here as the argument we place this term. So let's see what happens. And let's type f1 and let's see the response. So after some time you will see something like this. This is our exponential function and we see a very pretty print of this function. This is because we call this function init printing. To compute the Laplace transform, we type this line. We call the function Laplace transform. As the first argument, we specify the name of the function. As the second argument, we specify the variable name for time. As the third argument, we specify the variable name for the complex variable and we say no cons is equal to true. It's not for the time being important to understand this parameter. Let's see the result. And if I type print Laplace f1, I will have this expression. However, if I just type Laplace f1, I will obtain this nice response. So, obviously, the Laplace transform of our original function is 1 over b plus s. And we know that from the basic table of Laplace transforms. Let us now learn how to compute the Laplace transform of a more complex function. For example, let us assume that we have this function e to the power minus bt multiplying sinus of time. Again, this is a very standard function in control systems. And let's compute its Laplace transform. To compute its Laplace transform, we will type something like this. First, we will define our function. And here's the definition. We use this sympy.x to define the exponential. And to define the sinus function, we use sympy.sin to define the sinus sinusoidal function. Let's see this function. Here it is. Very nice print. I'm really amazed how well this library prints complex functions. And let's again compute the inverse Laplace transform. We call Laplace transform the name of the function time, complex variable, no condition, true. And let's see the result. Here's the result. Next, let us explain how to compute the inverse Laplace transform. For example, consider this function in the complex domain. S is the complex variable. And let us assume that we want to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this function. That is, we want to find f of t. In my previous video, I explained how to do that by hand. That is, we can use the partial fraction expansion and we can compute the inverse Laplace transform. However, since we have the SymPy library, we can do that automatically. To compute the inverse Laplace transform, we will type something like this. First of all, we will define our function. So let's see our function. Here it is. 
Next, we can, for example, compute the partial fraction expansion of this function, and obviously, this is the partial fraction expansion. Partial fraction expansion is very useful method for computing the inverse Laplace transform. And from this expression, you can simply apply the basic rules for the inverse Laplace transform. That is, you can look into the tables, and you can see that this term corresponds to the e to the minus 2t. This term is 6 to multiplying e to the minus 1t, and this term is just a step function. However, since we have the SymPy library, we can do that automatically. We type SymPy dot inverse Laplace transform. We specify the name of the function. We specify the name of the complex variable and the name of the variable representing time. And let's see the result. Here's the result. Voila. It's a very nice expression. However, we see one problem over here. We don't know what is theta, and we see that the SymPy library did not properly multiply all the terms over here. So let's see how to deal with this problem. First of all, this variable theta is a heavy side or a step function. That is, roughly speaking, you can replace this theta by one. To get the nicer expression for our inverse Laplace transform, we will call this function expand. And let's see the result. And voila! See what happened. Let's compare this expression with our original expression for the inverse Laplace transform. And we can see that the SymPy library actually multiplied all the terms to obtain this expression. Finally, let us learn how to transfer this expression to lat latex. For example, you might need to include this equation in your scientific report or your scientific publication. You can do that by calling the function dot latex. And let's see the result. Here, I need to correct this part. This should be yt1. And let's see what happens. Voila! Here's the latex expression. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.